426-9228, or you can email me at Reggie Holly, R-E-G-G-I-E-H-O-L-L-E-Y at AOL.com. And our guest uh, now is Joel Gamage from Texas Hatters up in uh, Lockhart, Texas. Joel, welcome. How are you doing this morning? And you've got some great events coming up that you're, I know you're real excited about. Tell us about that. Yes, sir. We have our second annual Hot Rods and Hatters in Lockhart, Texas. At Cedar Hall this year, we've got a concert venue out back of uh, Cedar Hall, the dance hall in Lockhart. And when is that going to be again? That's going to be February 2nd. February 2nd. So that's going to be a yes, big sir. deal, huh? It's going to be a great deal. And tell us briefly a little bit about your background. Your grandfather was Manny Gamage who, uh, before that, your, your great-grandfather started the business, Texas Hatters, but your, your grandfather made it famous, and you guys are in the Austin area for a long time, now you moved over to Lockhart. Correct. But you got the same equipment that you used to use to make all those hats. That's right. So you and make they, all that stuff from scratch. They have to get correct. close to the sausage over there, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're right in between all the downtown barbecue. Mm -hmm. We're, uh, we're just is, off the square. How long does it take you to make a hat from scratch? From scratch, it usually takes about a week to two weeks. Two weeks, depending on what mm -hmm. they want done. Yes, sir. And are you still taking any orders for Christmas, or is it too We're late? We're still taking orders for Christmas. We're only going to be closed for about three days right up to Christmas. All right. Tell us your phone number and website in case people want to reach you and they want to get more information about Texas Hatters. 512-398-4287 or www.texashatters.com. Okay. Introduce your guest to me. This is Stephen Dean from the Texas Dance Halls Preservation. Uh, Stephen, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming uh, down from Austin. You betcha. Thank you for having me. And tell us about your organization. It's quite a deal. It's a nonprofit, right? 501c3. It is, and uh, it's to help preserve and promote uh, Texas uh, historic Texas dance halls. And uh, I've personally been over 700 of them. State. In Texas alone. In Texas alone. You know, I, I was telling you, Geronimo Trevino wrote this book on Texas dance halls right. a while back, and I've been in radio a long time, so I've been going to these little dance halls when I got in radio, but when I, before I was uh, younger in high school, we never did that. Uh, my family didn't. But I, I've discovered this whole new world out there of these dance halls, and these people still... It's the big deal in the small communities, isn't it? it? Is. On it Friday is. and Saturday night, that's where you go. And we're trying to we're trying to preserve that because it's it's a gathering place. It's not just a dance hall, but it's a community hall. So it's not just a business. It's become part of the. They're it's, all part is. of the community. It's, it's the heart and soul of the community in many of these communities. And a lot of times, you've had some very good people on this morning. And these halls are also halls to uh, help raise funds for needy times and, and whatnot. Well, think know. about the millions of dollars over the years that the dance halls and these small communities have been made available exactly. to raise money. Exactly, yes. So, like I said, they're the heart and the soul. And what motivated you to form a nonprofit? I mean, I know you, you this, it must have been something really, was there any one particular thing that got you off on this? Did, well, it's a lot of work to do that. Yeah, to me it was, what got me initially interested was just the history of it. I'm a big Texas history buff and I'm a big Texas music history buff. And uh, that was what got me started in the beginning. But then uh, once I started going to these, it was very rewarding just seeing this history. And uh, I felt like no, nobody, you know, we have uh, the courthouses have been saved. Mm -hmm. uh, many of the churches have uh, been saved, uh, the lighthouses, whatnot. And I think it's time that we started uh, saving some of these dance halls, these community halls, because they, like I say, because once they're gone, they're, they won't be the it. same. That's you it. can put up a brand new building, but it's, it's, not, the it's not the same. No. And if uh, anybody wants to uh, see any of these uh, halls or go to any, we have a, a website that you can go and see where the dances are, and there's also over 500 pictures of different dance halls. So you can go to www.texasdancehall.org. One more time. Texas Dance Hall, singular, texasdancehall.org. And you got an event coming up in? In March at Ann Hall Hall, and uh, it's going to be a fundraiser. And I can't. Uh, we haven't confirmed anybody yet, but uh, we're looking for uh, some big stars. For okay, that. good. When, when you nail those down, let us know. We'll get back on the air. With and that. I would like to mention too. Today uh, there is a fundraiser for Lerma's, the historic Gulento Hall here in, in town. It's at six o'clock down in San Pedro. So, good. Uh, if you might want to, your audience want to stop by and check that out. All right, Stephen Dean, Texas so Sandsaw Preservation. Uh, Incorporated, a uh, great organization. Thanks for being here. And Joel, thank you for being here and thank you for bringing Joel Gamage from uh, Texas Hatters up in Lockhart, Texas. Thanks for being with us today. We'll have Joel's going to be back on with us again, too.
And before we go today, I want to mention uh, the Cowboy Christmas next Saturday in Enchanted Springs Ranch over in